Suzuki GSXR 1000. A motorcycle that has redefined what a modern sport bike should be. GSXR is a is an institution. But before Suzuki could build its first bike, the company had to totally reinvent itself. A hundred years ago, Suzuki made the best weaving rooms in the world. I had no idea myself. I mean, I thought they made motorcycles. Today, they're famous for motorcycles. But a century ago, they were famous for machines that made cloth. You have to have cloth, and uh, I guess back in the day, there was quite a market for it. Suzuki looms were precision machines used to create intricate fabrics, and today, that precision continues on their motorcycle production line. It's amazing to me how quick they can uh, assemble an engine. I, I could never understand how they got everything organized so it all went together like that. I mean, who, who organized all that stuff? Why did the Suzuki Loom Company go out of business? And how did a loom company reinvent itself as a motorcycle manufacturer that would bring racing to the masses? Hamamatsu, Japan, a city few tourists visit, even though it's only 150 miles south of Tokyo. Hamamatsu was one of Japan's major industrial centers, and most Westerners arriving at Hamamatsu are here on business. For many years, it was the center of Japan's fabric industry. Today, Hamamatsu is home to the Suzuki Motor Corporation. With a population of 600,000, Hamamatsu is a far cry from the small seacoast village it was back in 1909. The year Michio Suzuki founded the Suzuki Loom Company. As a child, Michio Suzuki had watched his mother and other women in his village laboriously weave fabric by hand. He grew up vowing to create a machine that could make the work easier. And he did. By 1929, Michio Suzuki had been awarded more than 120 patents for inventing an entirely new type of mechanical weaving machine. Suzuki looms were so good that the company survived the destruction of World War II and actually prospered in post-war Japan. Until I got a little bit older in life and started and started appreciating uh, uh, things from a different perspective, I had no idea myself. I mean, I thought they made motorcycles, and that was it, you know. For nearly 50 years, Suzuki looms were the best money could buy, and they were sold all over the world. But in 1951, Michio Suzuki would be blindsided by a global cotton market collapse. The world's best loom maker faced financial disaster. What Michio Suzuki did next was as ingenious as any loom he'd ever created. In 1952, at the age of 64, Michio Suzuki set his sights on a new mechanical device, reinventing himself and his company in the process. Industrial company with a lot of uh, a lot of smart technology for the time and um, just a lot of uh, 
a lot of business sense back in the day. Interesting that they were able to morph that loom company and that technology into something that would benefit Japan's population post-war. Post-war Japan needed cheap transportation. Michio Suzuki, the man who had pioneered every major development in Japan's loom industry, used his technical genius to invent a motorized bicycle. He called it the Power Free. Remarkably, every piece on the Power Free was designed and built by Suzuki. And they built all their loom products themselves and didn't outsource any of that. Uh, and it would make sense that they would continue that with their bike business. Power Free was really the world's first true moped. It had a unique gear system that gave riders three choices. Pedal it as a bicycle. Let the tiny engine help power you along. Or stop pedaling and ride on engine power alone. The two-stroke engine takes over when you need to go up hills or do some distance. and. Uh... Just to, it's interesting to see that, that that part of the market has really kind of stayed the same. I mean, a, a current Pook moped is kind of just what Suzuki was building back in the day, really. And, uh, and that's 1952, so that's quite a few years ago. The Power Free was such an ingenious device, the Japanese government gave Michio Suzuki money to research motorcycle engineering. of the Suzuki Loom Company was over, but the Suzuki Motor Corporation was born. Reinvention became the new mantra of the Suzuki mindset. In 1953, Suzuki created a new Power Free, giving it a 60cc engine that cranked out two horsepower. In its very first year of production, the Power Free won the Mount Fuji Hill Climb, one of Japan's most prestigious road races. Like a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, Suzuki had changed itself yet again. Now, it was a company that not only created practical means of transportation, but a company that lived to go racing. DNA of the Suzuki is... Uh sportiness and the race. In 1954, Suzuki invented the Kolita, its first true motorcycle. Two years later, in 1956, they retooled their design, giving the Kolita a larger two-cylinder engine. By 1959, it was time for Suzuki to test themselves and their machines against the best Japan had to offer. So they took the Kolita racing. Four riders and 11 mechanics spent three months living in a wooden shack on Mount Asama, testing their bikes for the famous Mount Asama Volcano Race. In the late 50s in Japan, there were over 200 companies building motorcycles. They were responding to the growing demand of Japan for reliable two-wheel transportation. Each company was trying to prove to the public that their machines were the best. Whoever won the 14-lap, 131-kilometer Mount Asama races would hold a sizable advantage. Our motorcycle's image is, uh, first of all, sportiness and also good handling. So it comes from the motorcycle race uh, experience.